Good day, and thank you ever so much for your curiosity in what is starting from scratch. On this particular morning, I awoke, got ready, did everything I normally do, and um, contemplating where I would start, <clears throat> this became the exact place. So without further ado, I am sharing with you the writings of my heart. And on this particular day, I happened to open one of my three books um, that I have been writing in and opened to page 33, of which you are now about to be privy to. Thank you so much for tuning in and and just tune in, that's all. Perhaps there is something for you in here. Day 33, starting from scratch. An early commencement again, and joy ensues. She just finished meditation. The window is open, and there is a gentle breeze. It is yet dark outside, in quiet of noise. There is a bird that sings. She's of the realization early on this day, with the ping of inspired thought towards the end of her meditation, that her most inspired writing comes at morning and night, in bed, whilst she is closest to being non-physical, in sleep or dream state. She cannot help but draw an analogy to a baby just born, and an old person, close to transitioning, both very pure, one just arriving from God, from consciousness, from all that is, the other returning to God, to consciousness, to all that is. Of course, there is no real separation, only the illusion of it, whilst we are here in our physical avatars, due to the conditioning and programming from even before emergence into physical. It already starts in utero as we pick up and learn from the vessel that carries us, our mother, her thoughts, her emotions, spoken word, and those she interacts with. All of that is already influencing the unborn us. This morning, She's reminded again of Scott C. Peck's book, The Road Less Travelled, one she put down after reading and contemplating the first page, which often she refers to. He himself refers to one facet or tenant of the Buddha's four noble truths. Life is difficult. Accept it is and be free. This morning, the post she is conjuring up to share with you is fact. Life is difficult. Deny this fact, it remains so. Surrender to and accept this fact, and it becomes easier. She loves to chew on and share things like this. She loves sharing altogether. There is great value in it. And what are we here for? if not to share with one another. We are not meant to hold on to anything. Nothing travels when we take the journey back to non-physical, be it in night sleep or in transitioning from life to death. Everything's already there. Holding on to anything in physical life is like holding our, our breath, which momentarily is of great benefit but for too long, it is detrimental. Anyhow, back later. Time to switch books and go into appreciation mode. She'll end off here, for now in great appreciation, that you are here with her. Today's a very exciting day. She knows this. Despite the sun not having risen yet, she knows that it's coming. And she knows that even if it's cloudy, the sun will have risen. Beautiful, no? 
God bless you. And until later, lots of love. Later. She got them. She got her first kitchen toys today. Well, aside from the scale. Her 1.2 litre chopper and hand blender are now in the glass cabinet and cooking begins tomorrow. She reckons doing a batch of each because why not? She'll probably jump back into Tesco in the centre and get the ramekins and the toilet paper that she couldn't fit anywhere on her person today. She's back on mobile, but quite actually, it just wasn't bad being off of it. She does spend a fair amount of time sending many people personal positive stuff that she does enjoy. However, there is the idea to get it onto her website and perhaps even emails like a love note from me to you sort of thing. We'll see. We'll see. Out from nine to two today and with heavy bags. She got home and told herself she wasn't jumping into any work. And in fact, having been up since five-ish, sleeping little again, out of sheer excitement, she thought she might sleep. She made a quick salad of rucola, porcini mushrooms, the last of them since Christmas time, coriander seeds, chilli flakes, and roasted red pepper, all atop her rye bread. Lovely. We're so simple these days. But still hungry, she boiled her sprouted lentils in the porcini water, before then adding basmati rice. A simple but delicious meal. She enjoyed her open face sandwich whilst watching The Little Buddha. It was like a treat for her, as normally she eats in silence. She wanted to watch something Wayne Dyerish, like The Shift, and then remembered Siddhartha. She'd read the book but never saw the film. There were words which stood out, or rather, as a continuation, about a person she'd been angry with. She was going back and forth as to whatever she was feeling about this person, sort of bittersweet, not quite hate and love, but something, um, something incredibly strong. She finally just decided the one in question or contemplation is a trigger, and thereby a great teacher, and appreciation and thanks were quietly offered in her heart towards this person. That one is surely one of her greatest teachers, representing a whole collective of others. This time, we've got to close the circle, bust the old pattern and begin anew. At the end of the little Buddha, those were the very words delivered to the three Buddha incarnate. Thank you for being my teacher. She smiled to herself, hearing those words, but then again, and even more so, when she followed that film with one she'd not seen nor heard of, where Wayne Dyer does actually make a cameo appearance. It is a story about him and his father, and all the anger he held towards him that soon as he saw him in a different light, as his teacher, his entire life changed. When she heard those words yet again, back to back with the earlier film, she knew this was clearly a sign of confirmation. She can't remember just now where she heard it, but... It gives her some relief to think that the assholes in our lives, aka the greatest teachers, are volunteers to be such, to help us evolve. We made pacts, agreements with them, before coming into physical form, that that's what we'll be or do, so the other could finally shake off an old pattern that they'd been carrying around for lifetimes. Hers? has to do with men. She's always been the one to walk away. 99% of the time. Not because she didn't love, but because she did. Both herself and him, and had to set them free.